Well, we're back doing the Wednesday Night War. It's been a while since we've done this, but this time we're going to see how things are progressing. Ever since the last couple weeks, we haven't seen AEW and NXT go head to head. All of that is coming up on this episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Hey everyone, welcome to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things pro wrestling from AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, wrestlers, matches, championships, the whole enchilada. I'm your host, Jay Rudd here. So as you all know now, we're back doing the Wednesday Night War again. But this time, it's going to be a very interesting thing. As you all know, for the last couple of weeks, it has been proven several times that AEW and NXT can get better ratings, better viewerships when they're not colliding. But this time, this week, it's now back to normal in the way of the Wednesday Night War. Basically, it's been a lot of discussion about this. But right now, let's talk about who won the ratings and the viewership for this week. The winner is AEW Dynamite. As you all know, they've always been winning for both viewerships on a lot of occasions, but the ratings, it's always been down. So they got 880,600,000 8, views with the rate of 0.34 in the 18 to 49 demographic. As for NXT, they received 689,000 views with the rate of 1.1 eight in the ratings of the 18 to 49 demographic so it all proven now that AEW is still strong no matter what it happens now some of you are saying this why can't either show move now the reason is this this has been discussed with AEW before if you guys have been following them ever since they started doing their shows um, the network TNT were the ones to suggested to have AEW to have their shows on a Wednesday because originally AEW was supposed to be on a Tuesday but frankly because of that the network decided it was best to do it on a Wednesday not because you know they wanted to compete against the WWE's NXT it's because on Tuesdays and Thursday they broadcast um, the NBA on both days Tuesdays and Thursdays that was the reason. That was their call. Not Tony Khan or anybody from AEW. Now, as for the NXT, you probably say, can they? Yes. Now, the network probably would want to move the NXT brand to Tuesdays. But the only problem they need to deal with is Vince McMahon. He's the one who claims he has a final say. The reason he does not want to move NXT away from Wednesday is... He will not tolerate AEW's existence, but it has proven that both shows can coexist even if they're not butting heads together. But the, Vince, his ego is totally blinding him on every level. So, the network, in my opinion, and from very other wrestling news outlets such as the Square Circle, Psycho Babble, and others, we can all agree saying it's the network that makes the decision. But Vince is the one who feels they don't have a say in it because. They, he, he has a massive ego that will not tolerate a company. Now, you say, okay, let's say NXT moves to Tuesday. Will that affect Impact? To be honest with you, no. Their viewership is somewhere around over 100,000 views. I mean, I watch it every Tuesday. That's why I put Tuesday Wrestling. So the, view, the ratings and viewerships are not that good because Impact are not worried about WWE. They're more worried about themselves. And this is one of those things that proves that Impact can do the same thing. E even AEW, despite that they were doing, um, throwing some shots at WWE once in a while. But 
it is what it is. So we'll just got to wait and see what happens. If Vince somehow decides, okay, it's best to move it, then yes. But if not, then he brought that upon himself on that. So right now, let's review AEW Dynamite from start to finish. All right, so let's do AEW Dynamite. It first started out, it was supposed to be Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus, along with Marco Stunt, facing with FTR. But however, when before FTR came out, here comes the Yum Bucks. Now, as you know, recently, they have been unhappy with how things have changed since Hangman Page cost them the gauntlet match. They could have given them an opportunity to face the former... Uh, AEW Tag Team Champions Kenny and Hangman Page so what they did a week ago they super kicked Alex Marvez and now this week it was a ref as soon as they left they went straight to Tony Khan and gave him loads of cash which is another $10,000 fine $5,000 for e each of these guys as soon as they were leaving they were being uh, poked on by FTR saying they think it's funny what they're going to but FTR, if I were you, I wouldn't be getting in their nerves because I hate to see Tully Blanchard get super kicked. You brought this mess upon yourself. Sooner or later, you have to deal with it. Now, let's jump into the match between FTR and Jurassic Express. Man, it was a good match. I enjoyed it. It was amazing. Some great spots. Uh, there were a great moment where you see Jungle Boy doing everything on his own. But however, FTR were able to pick up the victory thanks to cheating, cheating their way through and through Tully Blanchard. So they won the match, but this was a non-title match. So basically, if they would have beaten them fair and square, they would have got an opportunity for the ta tag team titles. But it appears that's not going to happen. So they won the match. Next thing we have is something goes wrong in the backstage. Uh, you see Matt Hardy in the back look like he's in pain in his knee. Um, he, then you see Private Party try to find out what was going on. I wouldn't pass by of what happened. Here comes Jericho and Hagar try to check up on Hardy. But my best guess is that it was Jericho who did it in order to get even to Matt Hardy for what he did to Sammy Guevara. So that's my assumption. So... I don't think he wants them to be there because he's their co the private party's coach. But we'll, we'll see what happens down the line. Next thing we have is Kenny Omega goes on commentary. Who was commentary on the match between Frankie Kazarian and his former tag team partner, Hangman Page. Now, as you'll recall a week ago, both men had interviewed separate interviews. Jim Ross interviewed Kenny and Tony Schiavone interviewed... Um, uh, hangman but how but both men had different points what they were saying hammond wants to reunite with kenny and try to cash in on the rematch clause because they do have but as for kenny he feels that he's done with it it's time for him to move on to be a singles competitor and that's always been on his mind but it appears that both men have different points of views what it's going on so basically, here's the thing. Both Kenny and Hammond are still in a ranking, but however, they haven't had any discussion over for almost two weeks. Almost two, a week and a half or so since All Out. But we'll see how that goes. But the match between Frankie Kazarian and Hangman, it did prove a little bit Hangman can still do things as a single competitor. Facing off a guy like Frankie, who is a veteran, but man, that match was great. Uh, great spots on this one too. Um, Handman picked up the victory by implying the buckshot lariat on Kazarian, picking him the victory. Now, as soon as the match was over, Kenny decided to take off and not celebrate with Handman. But when Handman turned around to look for Kenny, he was already gone. So basically, it's still unclear what's gonna happen. So if we all know that Handman's out of the elite thanks to costing the bucks. As um, match, we'll see how that goes down the line. Hopefully they reunite, but be stronger than ever. Now, the next thing we have is MJF coming out, along with Warlow. 
before the match even starts. MJF is saying that he was robbed, cheated, that he should have been the champion after losing it all out against Moxley. So, basically, he's upset, but he did tell Justin Roberts to name him the uncrowned world champion. He's still fixated on his mind, thinking he's the champion. That's how it goes. So, his match he faced is against uh, Sean Dean, but it was a quick match. Or should I say, a squash match. So he picked up the victory by applying his uh, submission move, and that's it. So basically, but he did state it, that he will form a stable faction or so. It doesn't matter when or where, if he's here, if he's gone, however it goes. So that's what he's planning to do on the whole thing. We're, I'm not sure who will pick, he will pick, but we'll see when that happens. Now, we do. if you all recall, not too long ago, Taz throw in some techniques on certain wrestlers. His techniques that he revealed is none other than a member of Team Taz, Ricky Starks. As you know, Ricky Starks does have some fantastic moves with the spear and the Rochambeau. So he explained a little bit about that and he thinks that's going to be one of the best applicants that he can throw in. So we'll see what, with that, when that, where it goes with it. Uh, and then we see in the ring Eddie Kingston along with the Butcher and the Blade and the Lucha Brother. As you know, things ha they talk about how they're family and all that. So what happened is, he sent the Butcher and the Blade out of the ring. And then he picked out some victims. So he picked out Blackwood and Garcia along with Griff Garrison to take him out. So basically, they just beat them up, like, senselessly. But as you know, Eddie Kingston has been claiming he never went over the top of the ring. Now... That could be true, but we'll see how that goes because the thing is, there is a lot of things that could go in this particular segment between Eddie Kingston and the down the line in his career since he's now all elite. Next match we have is the tag team match. Private Party versus um, Chris Jericho and Hangman Page. Now, a week ago... Jericho did state that he and Hangman are going to jump in as a tag team. Now, some people can find that criticism as we all know Jericho is not that type of person who would just jump in into that. But, however, that's he wants to be back on top by competing in a tag team, making the ranks. So, we'll see how that goes. But this match was great. Private Party did put on a hell of a show on this one, I have to say. There was not too many high-flying spots on this one. They tried to minimize them. They even did some moves for, uh, out of the Hardy playbook. Uh, it was great. But the one thing that became more interesting is when uh, Hagar whacked Isaiah Cassidy's with the bat, causing him to be hurt. But certain mo mo times, when he feels like he had the match won, he, he still hurts, but he's having a hard time trying to make the pin. But that was a great spot how it goes because it shows they're determined to win take out two heavy hitters like Jericho and Hagar. But however, Jericho picked up the victory by applying the Judas effect on Mark Quinn. So, we'll see how far they're going to go if they do get a shot of the AEW Tag Team titles. Let's see where they go for that. Next thing we have is, for the first time in AEW, we get to see the NWA World Women's Championship being defended currently by Thunder Rosa facing off one half of the winners of the the Women's Tag Team Cup tournament, Ivalice. This was a hard-hitting match. I have to say, they did the right move on this one with Thunder Rose facing off against Ivalice because we need more re f female wrestlers. I know there has been criticism by AEW for not giving much of priority with the women's division in AEW, but this time it did play it out pretty well. Throughout the entire match, you see Hikaru Shida watching, seeing what she was seeing. So at the moment, it was going great. I love this match. But however, there has to be a winner, and that winner turned out to be none other than Thunder Rosa retaining her title. Now, as soon as the match was over, Diamante shows up and takes out Thunder Rosa. But Hikaru Shida decided not to tolerate Ivelisse and Diamante disrespecting 
a champion like Thunder Rosa. So she took out both of them single-handedly. And then she handed over the NWA Women's World Women's Championship back to Thunder Rosa. But later it's been confirmed the next week we're going to see Thunder Rosa and Hikaru Shida facing against Yamante and Ivelisse at Dynamite. So this is going to be an interesting segment. We got two women's champions and you got one team who are the the Women's Tag Team Cup Tournament winners. So this is going to be one balls to the walls women's tag team match. And I can't wait to see it. Next up we have is another segment with Kip Sabian and Miro. They're working out and all that. So basically Miro saying he's going to set up the perfect bachelor party for, for Kip. And of course he told him not to get him in trouble like last time. So it was like okay, okay. Well, I'm just trying to be the best man. Give the best bachelor party ever. So basically it, it, that's how it turns out. So it kind of ended like that. I'm like so surprised. Next up we have is Lance Archer and Jake Roberts come out. As you know, there has been, uh, it's been confirmed also for next week. Lance Archer is picking two member, two teammates for a six man tag team title. More of a preview that's going to take place later in October where Lance Archer is going to face John Moxley. So Lance Archer is going to pick two members, so is John Moxley. So Lance Archer and Jake Roberts are already out, and they called out an unusual person. That person is Taz. Now, as you know, Tame Taz has been trying to get their hands on the world title ever since Brian Cage first appeared at AEW's uh, Casino Battle Royal at Double or Nothing. So basically, it's always been the case. So, of course... Lance Archer said, you know, consider me as you're the enemy of of my enemy. So that makes you friendly. So basically they they made a deal saying that if Lance Archer was able to beat, you know, John Moxley, then he'll give Brian Cage a shot. Now as soon as this whole alliance thing between them was happening, here comes Moxley trying to give a speech, but all of a sudden he was ambushed by Ricky Starks and um, Brian Cage. As soon as the ambush was nearly over, all of a sudden we get a surprise person to show up to help Moxley. That person is none other than Will Hobbs. As you know now, Will Hobbs is now all elite. Now he has made a good impression back at the Casino Battle Royal at All Out. So he's now involved and it turns out he is now the second member to join Team Moxley at next week's event. But however, Moxley did state it, he needs a third person. And the person he called out is none other than Taz's favorite wrestler, Darby Allen. So that's a huge match we got to see. So basically, we got Lance Archer teaming with uh, Brian Cage and Ricky Starks versus John Moxley. Will Hobbs and Darby on. This is going to be major. So hope you guys are ready to see that match coming up. Now, let's get to the main event. We got the parking lot fight between the best friends and, of course, Santana and Ortiz. This match feud has gone long enough. So they decided to end it with fighting in the parking lot because that's where it kind of started, where Santana and Ortiz smashed Trent's mom's Sue's a van. But the match was amazing. One of the best ones ever. There's been moments where they got thrown into the windshield, the hood of the car, or the roof of the car. Every moment. I'm like thinking, dang. It's Even Mick Foley praises this match. How it turned out, you know. And it was great to see it. You know, and I enjoyed how this became a physical, violent type of match. But however, the way... There was people who proclaimed the entire time that it was going to be Santana and Ortiz that were going to win it because this seems like their specialty. But however, Chuck T did something. He pulled out, if you notice, car keys to a car where he was laying around. In the trunk, it's freshly squeezed. Shows up and super pet punch Santana with the chain on his fist. And of course, Trent picked up the victory on Ortiz winning and as soon as the match was over we see orange cassidy and best friends walking out 
and all of a sudden you see Sue right there in her van. So Orange is riding shotgun, and the best friends take off with Sue's mom, with Sue, into the, to wherever they're going. But as soon as the match was over, before it, they take off, Sue pulls out the finger. <laughs> That's the best way to end AEW Dynamite. I, I thought it was a classic. So that is it for AEW Dynamite. So let's move on to NXT. All right, so we're doing NXT right now. So it starts out with the first match. This was a non-title match between Shotzi Blackheart and Eero Shirai. This happened about a week ago. As you know, Robert Stone was trying to destroy Shotzi Blackheart's tank. But a no luck, and they, Aaliyah, and kind of interrupted Io Shirai's photo shoot. Then I take it, but somehow, Shotzi Blackheart decided to poke the bear. But man, this match was great. It kind of showed that Shotzi Blackheart had more that she can say. Not only that, she pushed Io Shirai to her limits. It was one of those matches you know you can be impressed because you see. Io Shirai, who is amazing at what she does in the ring. And you got Shotzi Blackheart, who has a different type of style that's completely different. And it's great to see that. Sometimes you can appreciate the type of things when it comes to that. But it was amazing. I loved it. I enjoyed this match. But, of course, as always, the winner has to be the favorite, Io Shirai. So she picked up the victory, but at the end of the match Shotzi showed her respect to to Io because you know we all know how great she is as a not only as a champion but as a competitor so I'm very happy with that next up we see is Tommaso Ciampa against this guy I never heard name Desmond uh, Troy but this match was more violent he did the same maneuver what he did to Jake Atlas and he picked up the victory on this one when he put the, tr Desmond Troy on uh, the DT off the ring ropes. But as soon as the match was over, Jake Atlas made it clear that he will face Tommaso Ciampa next week. So this is going to be a killer re uh, retribution match for Jake Atlas because, you know, he beat him up in a senseless match that he did not deserve to beat. But it is what it is, and now it's going to be a very interesting segment. Now, earlier of the day, as you... Drake Maverick made it perfectly clear a week ago to Killian Dane that they're going they've been booked to uh, team together against Undisputed Era. But however, Killian Dane doesn't seem like he's interested. He's not a team player. He's always been on his own, and all this and that. But uh, Drake has been unable to get a hold of him to talk, you know. So who knows how it's gonna go down now? Next thing we see is Finn Balor sending a message to everybody, whoever is willing to face him for the NXT Championship. So he said, line up. So there's a lot of good competitors I can see. Of course, we know there's Adam Cole, uh, Gargano, Ciampa, a few others. So they set up. So we'll see how that goes coming up. Now, the next match we have, Austin Theory, as you all know. He's a real cocky dude. He claims that he deserves everything, that he is first draft pick Hall of Famer and all this other crap. But all of a sudden, he says Bronson's read from a week, a week or two ago was a fluke. He thinks that it's impossible that he lost to him. But however, he decided to prove it by facing whoever comes out in the back. And surprise, it's none other than Kushida. And this was a great match to see Kushida. But he did not play no theme entrance he just made a beeline straight to theory it's great but however there's a new attitude in this with Kushida as you all know he did enter a a, a sort of a rivalry with um Valentine Dream a couple weeks ago but now we're seeing something different out of him a more aggressive type of Kushida I don't know exactly where they're gonna go with this but I'm kind of curious to see because, as you all know, if you guys follow Kushida, the reason he left um, New Japan, he wanted to join the Bullet Club. 
but Ghetto said no. Uh, from what Nico's theory believed in the, uh, from last year when we thought, is that they were trying to make him to be the next Tanahashi, but he wasn't ready for that. I mean, it would have been great to see how Kushida would react as a as a heel. He's always playing the babyface, but I don't know if that's the case with him right now. Like, they probably, if they're willing to send him now to become a, a heel. I'm not sure, but we'll see how that goes. Now, if you all recall a week ago, Candace LeRae invited Tegan Knox to dinner. As you know, she needs, uh, T- Candace believes that she needs to get in line to uh, accept the Gargano way, but Tegan doesn't believe in the Gargano way. So they start a little feud and uh, toss, uh, toss her salad, water, and Candace kind of destroyed it to by throwing the, the remote. And Johnny Gargano saying that she's going to send the bill to Tegan. There's no way she's going to accept it. She did not do anything. That was Candace. She did that. So even though it's been revealed that Candace LeRae is part of a match, who will a, a gauntlet match, whoever's going to face Io Shirai for the title as a number one contender. And Tegan's also in it too. So we'll see where that goes. Next match is a title match for the NXT Tag Team Championship. Now, a couple weeks ago, as you know, Imperium lost the tag team titles to Breezangles. And they believe that they are a joke, an embarrassment to the map, that they're disrespectful. But what they didn't realize, there's a new fire within Breezangle that they did. So they wanted to prove to them that they're nothing but a joke, that they are going to be the shortest NXT Tag Team Champions in the NXT Universe. But man, that match was amazing. It showed the Breeze Angle are not just a couple of dudes that just like to have fun. They can have fun, but apparently they're taking this more seriously as ever. There's some great moments where Fandango was unable to tag uh, Tyler Breeze but he was able to, and Breeze, actually, Tyler actually went full uh, metal speed on this one, and it's so great to see what he was doing. But there was a good moment that I saw near the end. Breeze Zango saw that they had Tyler Breeze in their in their signature move, but he turned it around and put um, what's his name, Eichner, uh, uh, Eichner I think. In a, in a hurricanrana, pinning him, and they actually retain the title. So, so basically, they are not a joke. So basically, to every NXT tag teams out there, be warned, Breezango is not the joke here. So that's going to be an interesting thing to see. Now, we have a women's tag team match. We have um, Je- Jesse Kamea teaming with Xylee. Facing off against the very, uh, um, a very interesting team, Caden Carter and Ka- Cassie Cantazaro. This is a match where you now get to see that Caden and Casey are being serious as a tag team duo because, as you know, the women's tag team top championships are no longer they're not in any brand, but they can face anybody, and it would be a perfect opportunity to see those two face off. To get a a, ch- a chance of the titles, but um, I'm gonna try to skip ahead a little bit on this one. The best part of the match is the combination pinning move. The way um, Casey had Azali in this submission move, but no, uh, Casey had her in a submission move while Kaden get a uh, a super kick, and then she rolled over and pin made the pin on her. It was very uh, very interesting how they ended. Allowing Caden Carter and Casey, uh, Cassie, Casey to win this match. How when po- post match of this match, um, they wanted to sh- uh, show respect to both uh, uh, Jesse and Zaylee, but Zaylee was not happy with it, so she just walked off. Uh, this is, seems like maybe they're changing her to become a heel, as you know she was in a, in a rivalry t- against Leah. Months ago, but now it seems it's not. I don't know exactly where they're gonna go with the whole thing. 
Then we have Tegan Knox giving a little message to Candace saying that, oh, it's not my fault that the TV broke. That was you. But she did state that she will be involved in the match to be the number one contender against Io Shirai for the title. So this is going to be one of those who gets the opportunity. Candace believes that it should be her, that she's more deserving. But Tegan felt she worked her real hard to get back after her injury. And this is going to be an interesting segment to see. Now, next thing we have is Undisputed Era, Bobby Fish and Roder Strong facing off the uh, Drake Maverick and Killian in. But however, Killian Dane had no interest, so he let Drake Maverick do all the work. He was on his own. Killian Dane was watching the whole thing, enjoying how Drake was hurting himself and all this. And man, Drake was able to hold his own. It was like very amazing how it turned out. But however, Regal saw exactly what he saw. He saw Killian Dane not doing anything. He's well aware that he booked it. But he had to basically force uh, Killian Dane the help. But all of a sudden, when Killian Dane came out right in front of the ring, he was leaving. But Roderick Strong poke the bear. Do not piss off a guy like Killian Dane. So he took him out and they used the chair on him or whatever. And it started with the DQ. But of course, Killian Dane is no friend of anybody, especially a guy like Drake Maverick. But that's how it ended with the whole thing with, with them. So. I don't, they didn't say who won this one, but this is going to be very interesting. Now, the next match we have, it, well, it's not a match. Uh, during the commercial break, Jake Atlas is saying that how he's excited that this is going to be a great match where he's going to face against Tommaso Ciampa. But however, when that happened, he was attacked by Tommaso Ciampa in the parking lot. And Kyle O'Reilly of the Undisputed Era shows up on his defense saying, save it for next week. So basically, this is going to be an interesting set of match how we're going to see. I don't know why Kyle O'Reilly showed up to help him, but I'm not sure if they're planning to expand the Undisputed Era. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Then William Regal announced for who will be the number one contender to face the newly crowned NXT champion, Finn Balor. So he set up Ever for next week. The gauntlet elimination match. The way it's going to go is going to start out with two wrestlers. And every four minutes, every wrestler will show up. So the first person that's been announced to enter is Kushida. So this is going to be interesting. So I'm assuming there'll be more. I'll keep up on this one and put them on the news update alerts. Who will be joining them soon? Now we go to the main event. We had Damian Priest versus Timothy Thatcher. As you know, Timothy Thatcher has been one of the most dedicated technical wrestlers we wrestlers we've seen he believes that damian priest didn't deserve to become champion because he spends too much time partying while you know timothy how he rolls he's very technical at what he does but this match was amazing he even tried to break the arm the right arm of damian priest but Priest knew he had to move forward as much as possible. He wasn't going to lose the title to a guy like um, Timothy Thatcher. So that's how it, it was going. But it was a great match. But the way he ended is putting Thatcher in, um, what was it? in his move, picking up the victory. So Damian Priest made his first successful title defense as North American champion. So he retained the title. So the real question is, who's next? But before he the, mat, the the show ended, he fired a flaming arrow that says, live forever. So I am happy how that's going to turn out. So get ready to give you guys my final thoughts of both shows. Now, 
I have to say there are four matches that I did like in AEW Dynamite and three from NXT. Now you can say why three and four. Well it's because there's certain ways that I did enjoy that makes good on what it does. You know, for example, if you follow um in um the Thunder Rosa and Ivalice match, you can see Thunder Rosa is a very compassionate individual as a wrestler. She's tough as nails, she does have that Lucha Libre style, but she also trains in MMA. And you look at the same thing with Ivalice, she has almost a similar background. But the only difference is Ivalice and Thunder Rosa have a, a years of how they've been around in the wrestling world. Ivalice been almost 10 years or so as for Thunder Rosa, like maybe six. So basically she's already four years off from Ivalice. But the story of how I like is this. Like she is one of the best competitors in all of wrestling for the women's division. It doesn't matter if it's in AEW or it's in WWE or Impact Wrestling. And she already made it clear in an interview with um, Chris Van Vliet that she won't be going to WWE. I don't think she likes how they, they do things down that way. So if I was Vince, I would pay attention to someone like her. Or else you may lose women in wrestling wherever they're going to go at it. So that's one of the things that I did pay attention. As for the match between Jurassic Express and um, and FTR, that was a really good match because, as you know, FTR has been acting like a bunch of spoiled kids, claiming they are the best, even though they believe that uh, Jungle Express will never be champions as long as they are. They always they try to act like they they're the leaders of the tag team divisions, but they're not. They're just a bunch of cocky dudes. But sooner or later, someone has to strip them of the titles my money will be on the bucks as you all know and as matches like um let's see what other matches were good let's see like the parking lot brawl was one that was good it tells the story how the rivalry between you know the best friends against Santana and Ortiz has always been one of those long feuds that was a good one. Same thing with uh, with Hamman and, and Kazarian. But the only difference is we have been seeing now um, Frank Kazarian and Hamman, two guys who've been involved in tag teams. Like uh, Frankie has the most experience in that alongside with Christopher Daniels. So basically you get to see that. And as for Hamman, he has to start stepping up to become a singles competitor, which is something that Kenny has been doing and wants to do now. Now that they no longer have the titles in their possession. That is something that he, they have to focus on. But who knows where that's going to go for them. And the way I've been seeing this whole thing, it's pretty amazing now we're seeing Hangman stepping up as a singles competitor. Now in NXT, like I said, the three matches I like is Shotzi Blackheart and Io Shirai. Now th that match was pretty good because it kind of showed that Io Shirai had been pushed to the limit. You know, you look at uh, Shotzi Blackheart, she has a unique style that people can say say they like or they criticize or they hate, however you want. But you cannot deny she is meant to be in NXT due to the fact that people can say she's weird, but she's not. I've always been intrigued by looking at wrestlers, it doesn't matter if it's male or females, how they have their characters, how they make it come to life like for example like orange cassie some people say he's not a unique character he is so don't get it twisted Shotzi blackheart is one of those people on that list in my personal opinion now the next match was like the breezango and imperium for the nxc tag team titles what i like about that one is because what i think is you look at imperium a very self-disciplined uh tag team that believe that you need to respect the match the, the mat because they believe that if you mess around with the mat, act like you think this is fun and games, then you have no right to be there. But they lost their tag team titles against Breezango, thinking they're a joke, you know. But what they didn't realize, there was a fire that lit on of Breezango. And the way I see it, look what happened. They were beaten up by Legado the Fantasma on multiple occasions because their antics was very... They thought the way they dress up as luchadores... It's a sign of disrespect, but they weren't. They just like to have fun, but they believe, nope, that's disrespect. 
So basically, if I was Imperium, I'd take my frustrations out of Legato because they're the ones who started the whole mess. So that's how I would see it, you know. And as for the main event, um, Damian Priest versus Timothy Thatcher, that was a pretty good match because reason is, you look at Damian Priest, if you follow his career, you can tell he's going to be a big-time star. You know, he's... You guys know him from Ring of Honor as Punishment Martinez. That is something you cannot deny. But the way he's now becoming this character, the Archer of Infamy, that kind of brings out, okay, he's now going to the top. He has the North American Championship, and he's willing to fight anybody. But if people has a problem with him, the way he lives his life, he's not afraid to fight for it. You know, unlike Timothy Thatcher, believes that he's... He's wasting his time as a champion. He, sh he should not have won it. That type of thing. That's what I like about certain stories and certain matches that kind of tell of it. So if you guys compare that with both AEW and NXT. But you probably ask me right now who had the better show. I feel in my personal opinion it's AEW. Not because the ratings of you speaks for itself. It's for what I see. If you guys feel the same way. If you pay attention to every detail that goes on in both shows. And you guys can tell. Now, for all you W fans who are saying, no, NXT is better. Like, that's your opinion. But you don't have the cojones to watch the other show. That's why. So, because I watch all wrestling uh, promotions. I watch not only AEW, NXT. I watch New Japan. I watch NWA. I watch Impact, MLW, any promotion, including promotions from the indie scenes, promotions from the UK, Japan, um, all of that. I love all. That's the whole point of this of this channel, the lead at WrestleZone. You people only pay attention to certain promotions. I pay attention to all of them. So, keep that in mind. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, me reviewing the ones in that war. We'll see how things will go next week. So, um, as you know, I will find out more information if there's anything that's going to be related because I know some of you are... Fil er, or asking will NXT move to a Tuesday like I said that's Vince it's the network who calls it but Vince is not going to do that due to the fact that he will not tolerate AEW's existence but however we'll just have to say so I must bid all of you adieu so goodbye and have a nice day bang